What is going on, ladies and gentlemen? My name is Anoji, and welcome back to another Razel Dungeon Arena videos. For today's videos, I'm going to focus on talking about the unkillable pattern builds for Bison character. So first thing first, let's go ahead and jump right into the skill build. For the skill builds, I'm using Holy Wells, Letter Meditation, Lighting Orb, and lastly, Discipline. Discipline is the most important skill for this build. What it does, it provides my character an aura, give my character lifesteal and HP recovery, which is really good by the way. So technically, every time you deal damage to an enemy or monster or bosses, it's gonna heal your characters. Next one is going to be very optional because it's going to be depending on what kind of equipment you have. But I recommend getting equipment that provide your character a skill trigger effect. So this way, your character will have more opportunity to deal damage while optimizing your character toward the Discipline Aura. Now, for my equipment, I'm using three pieces of Mania Set Effect. The second piece is going to provide me a skill called Destructive Cloth, dealing over 1000% of damage with one second cooldown, which is really good by the way. For the third set, it's going to deal more damage for the Destructive Cloth when the enemy have 50% HP or more, so that's really good. As for my ring, it does a special ability called Lightning Link, dealing over 261% damage with 5 second cooldown, so that's not bad at all. Now for my gloves, I know it's low level, but it's pretty good. What it does is provide me a toxic mist dealing over 48.6% damage every second to all nearby target. It had 8 second cooldown and 8 second duration, so that is not bad at all when it comes to area damage as well as skill efficiency. Now going into the weapons, this weapon already provides me extra damage status. I know it also had crit rate bonuses which is really good by the way for 10 seconds by providing 13.6% crit rate with 20 second cooldowns. However, if you don't have a really good weapon, you can just still use any random weapon as long as you have extra damage status. As for the status, I actually maximize out the extra damage status. As you can see here, I have 4,785 with 10% bonuses. Now, that is a lot of extra damage status, but I'm gonna cover that right after I cover the talent skill tree because this is the most important aspect of the build. Now, for the talent skill tree, I maxed out Devon Thunder, Assault Thunder, Chain Lightning, Static Thunder, Holy Healing, Lightning Rim, and Energy Guardian. Now, anything that gives your character a trigger skill effect, which includes like Static Thunder, Assault Thunder, Devon Thunder, and Chasing Lighting, I know people will argue why am I getting Chasing Lighting. Chasing Lighting is actually pretty good with extra damage status. Extra damage status does not scale with skill attack or any attack, so basically, it's like a flat damage add on into your skills. Also, you want to unlock the Energy Guardian as soon as possible because this talent will provide your character energy recovery without having to auto attack monster to recover energy. Next, make sure to go all the way down and unlock the High Frequency Mastery and provide your character 10% more damage for extra damage status. Then next, you want to go up and unlock the Rim Knight to provide your character more damage application wherever you use heal, static fuse, etc. Lastly, you want to unlock the Thunder Blast which provide your character 12 Thunder Strikes whenever you use normal attack or that is skill. Now, if you notice that the damage scaling is 40.6% with 4 second cooldown, that is pretty low by the way, and this is another reason why you want to max out the extra damage status. The next one is going to be very optional based on whatever you have. However, I do recommend getting the extra damage status, so this way you can actually scale with the Thunder Blast without having to worry about any skill scaling. But if you already invest into that attack status rune, that's fine. Your destructive claw is going to do more damage with attack status. However, if you're looking for another way to invest into status attack, what I do recommend is actually investing into the soul lamp. The soul lamp will give your character a lot of status, HBs, physical armor, as well as attack for sensitives. Alright, the only content that actually hurt my character is Demon Land. So let's go ahead and jump right into the Demon Land real quick. My main goal is actually show you guys how much this character is healing up from the, all the damage I'm taking without having to stop for one second. First things first, I'm going ahead to cast a very specific skill and that is Disciplines. Alright, we are entering the Demon Land. There we go. Oh, this one should be pretty easy. So I'm going to go ahead and cast the Discipline. This way I have some extra life steal. We're going to cast the limitations, just walk up and watch the monster die. Look at that. <laughs> Oh, this is way too easy at the moment right now. I'm still working on the Helmo version for the story chapter. I can, show, I can show you guys how much damage this build is capable of in terms of tanking as well as dealing damage. But if you already noticed, look at my HP. Look at this healing effect, the, the green line. You can see a bunch of green line just popping up and healing an insane amount of HP. I'm not even losing HP at all, by the way. Look at that. Look at the top left corner. God, this is beautiful. Oh, look like no more monster over here. I just wish that Bison had some movement speeds, to be honest, because it's moving really, really slow. Compared to most of the classes, I think the Archer ones 
where you have the ability to jump around as well as gaining light steel. That's what is actually pretty good. Pretty straightforward. This build is just pretty straightforward. Cast disciplines, cast any ability you have, and just watch monsters die. Man, the Clara is insane, dude. Look at this. Everything just die in the pad. Alright, do we want to go to the next floor? I don't think we need to. There's a lot of monsters here. We should be fine. Alright, the boss about to spawn. Where is it? Oh, this is a good this is a good boss right here. This is actually the final boss, I believe, with a Shadow Clone one. Yeah, that guy doing a lot of damage. I think I can, I can just tank him. Look at that. <laughs> he cannot he can't even hurt me. I'ma just stand here just taking damage. <laughs> oh my goodness. Yeah, this, this build is super broken in my opinion. Super, super broken. I just hope that they don't nerf the light steals for Bison. Alright, before we end the video today, I do want to give you guys my thought about this build. This build is really good in total damage as well as sustain. It's definitely not top tier DPS in my opinion. But I think this build is going to be super super good when we get to the end game content where the bosses and the monster hits really hard. I don't know. What do you guys think about this build? Let me know in the video coming below. I would love to hear it from you guys. This is Sadoshin once again and I will see you all in the next videos. Later!